Fine, so here we are looking at question 3 of uh, the worksheet, section B, uh, and this is looking at heating a liquid. Suggest why, in terms of the molecular model, the energy associated with melting is less than that is associated with boiling. Okay, so for this I want to use um, some of the apps that we use, the applications, uh, simulations, um, and let's, uh, let's have a look at uh, this situation over here. So here we've got um, water to the low temperature. Uh, it's actually a solid. You can see there's some movement and so forth, but it's in quite a rigid structure, uh, the idea that it, this is a solid. Now, as I increase uh, the temperature to it, um, and that rigid structure starts to break down like that, you can still see that the particles are relatively close to one another, but um, the bonds have been broken to certain amounts. So there is a rise in the potential energy, which um, that energy needed to be put in. But if I continue to add energy to it, like this, uh, and we move to a a boiling situation, a vaporization, and then your particles completely separate from one another. They they are far away from one another. So the energy required to do that, to completely separate, uh, is much greater. Just to amplify that, I just want to use this, this application over here. Remember, this is your potential energy over here, distance between the atoms. So in the, in the melting in the solid situation, you probably got that sort of situation. Very close together, um, there is a certain movement, a certain vibration. Uh, in a liquid, as it turns to liquid, maybe you've got something like that. There is more freedom to move. We had to put in some more potential energy. But with a gas, it's got to be totally away. You see, all the energy over here to all that energy needs to be put in to be completely away. Here he comes back. He shouldn't come back. Okay, so I hope that explains it to some degree. So let's go back to our let's go back to our app, and um, not to our app to our question here. So in terms of uh, the molecular model, um, we have uh, with melting. Uh, you have a a loosening loosening um, of the bonds, but in bo in as with boiling, uh, there is a total separation. Total separation separation uh, of the molecules. Okay, um, now in this one over here, B, milk in a cup is heated to boiling point by passing steam through it. Whilst cooling subsequently, some milk evaporates. Distinguish between evaporation and boiling. Okay, so evaporation really is a situation where um, with, the, with evaporation, um, we have molecules... Uh, on the surface, um, on the surface, the ones with the highest kinetic energy, um, where who have kinetic energy is 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 the maximum maximum kinetic energy. These are the ones escape. Where with boiling, uh, this is right the way through the surface, uh, through this through the liquid. It's throughout throughout um, the liquid um, boiling boiling takes place sorry my writing is atrocious with this pen um, and with with boiling we have that the vapor pressure um, equals to the atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure where with evaporation the vapor pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure Okay, so those are those two questions. Let's move down. Yeah. 
it says here a cup contains 0 0.3 kilograms of milk at an initial temperature of 18 degrees centigrade Celsius estimate the minimum mass of steam at a hundred degrees Celsius that is required to heat the milk to 80 degrees Celsius and we get the specific latent heat of vaporization of water the heat capacity of water the specific heat capacity of the milk so you're going to get the Q gain uh, for the for the milk is going to equal to the Q lost uh, by both the um, the vapor, the steam, plus the water. So here you're going to get um, here you're going to get for this um, you will get your M C of the milk change in temperature for the milk. With this over here, we're going to get the mass times the latent heat of vaporization because as it changes from a from a gas to a, a liquid it will give out um, per kilogram it will give out this amount of energy and then once it's in a liquid it will be at 100 degrees Celsius it will then need to cool down to 80 degrees and in that process will also give out further energy so we're going to have that situation there so let's just put in our numbers then you're going to get 0 0.3 times 3800 uh, the temperature of the milk goes from 18 to 80 so that's 62 degrees uh, we have the I'm going to do a little bit of factorization here then we're going to take an M out here and we'd have 2.3 times 10 to the 6 plus the mass is what we're going to do. We've taken that out. The specific heat capacity is 4,200 and the water will go from 100 to 80 so that will be times by 20. Alright so I'm therefore going to need to divide this, multiply this and I'm going to divide it by this and I'll get my mass. So let's do that. Do it on our calculators. We can do it in one go. Um, we open brackets and we have 0 0.3 times 3800 0 times 62 close brackets divided by open brackets 2.3 exponent 6 plus 4200 times by 20 close brackets and we say equal and we get an answer there of uh, I'll just write out in full first 0 0.02964 uh, kilograms it will be now all of this is um, two significant figures 2.31880 as so for 30 uh, so we must put this in two significant figures 6 will make the 9 go to 10 so this is actually going to be 0 0.03 zero kilograms will be the minimum amount and it said say two reasons other than evaporation why why the answer to B2 is likely to be different from the actual mass well in heating the milk obviously the milk is in some container so the uh, the container uh, will also need to be heated will also be heated and um, the vapor, uh, there will be some vapor lost. Not all of it um, will condense, some will be lost. So, uh, vapor, some will be lost. Be lost. And also, you also get some heat loss. Um, not all the, the energy from the, from the steam from the steam there'll be some steam loss uh, and from the hot hot water at uh, at 100 degrees um, will go into the heat in the summer will be lost to the surroundings okay so there we have that question thank you very much